In this video, I'm gonna be giving you the tools that you need to tackle these five difficult shots in and around the green. So stay tuned. This video can save you so many shots depending on how good or bad your short game is. Right, first up, we're gonna go for the nice easy one to start with. Break us in nice and gently, just off the green, off the fairway. Full use of the green in front of us to so a back pin. What's the shot? What's the club selection? How are we gonna do it? Let's go. This is a position I see amateurs in a lot. Commonly they leave themselves short of the green because you've not hit enough club for that approach shot. Maybe overestimating how far you hit it or underestimating slope and wind. So this is a, I think this is quite a, quite a popular place to be. Now I've got to go for the chip and run here, but I'm only going to go down to gap wedge. I don't really like this, the seven and the eight irons. I would add an absolute push, go down to about a nine. But for me personally, I know that gap wedge is kind of a nice land it half and half or just under half and half and then let it release. Now what I try and do with the technique here, keep the ball position in the center of my stance. And as I release and go through the ball, I just try and make sure the toe of the club points up. So basically that would be a neutral position on the way back. I'm allowing the club to kind of follow the arc, which means I'm able to use the bounce. If your club then gets in front of the arc, then you're looking, you're gonna reduce the bounce and potentially catch it super fat. So once you get into this position, I want you to try and make sure that you're still actively releasing the golf club on the way through. So that toe of the club is still up on the way through. All right, so we're not trying to maintain loft, we're just trying to maintain the use of the bounce. Comes out with a nice little, nice low flight, little bit of check. Oh, and I nearly held it. Look at that guys, first time, first time. That's why you come to me for golf tips because I can execute it just as I'm explaining it. It's just, I just can't do that under pressure. Right, so same again, ball position in the center, toe up, rotate, toe up. Okay, so we're always moving, always rotating. Same again, toe up on the way through, landed. I actually caught that a tad heavy, a tad heavy, because I was literally talking as I was swinging, which is not recommended. So it's ended up not in a great place, to be fair, but it's too potable. So worst case scenario, I walk off this par four with a bogey. Okay, these are another thing that I see amateurs do a lot is make double bogeys from just being short of the green in regulation. It's an absolute no-no. Right, shot number two. We're going to go out to the rough. Right, shot two is getting a little bit trickier now because we've missed the green, but we've still got a little bit of green to work with. Not short-sided ourselves just yet. We're going to be covering that though in the video, so do stay tuned. But what I have got, I've got a mound to go over. I've got long grass to go over. So chipping out of longer grass, we expect to see a little bit of grass get stuck between club face and ball, which reduces the amount of spin, meaning when the ball lands, it will release. So we've got to try and take that into consideration. We're not going to be landing this too close to the hole and expecting lots of spin. We're going to be landing it a little bit shorter and releasing it out to the flag. Right, so one of the things we're gonna do to counteract the additional roll that the grass is gonna give us is I would often put the ball position a bit further forward in my stance. So a normal kind of pitch shot from here or chip shot from here, I'd put the ball in the center of my stance, which encourages me to hit down onto the golf ball, which is always nice, isn't it? That's what you want, you want that compression into the ball. Putting the ball position ever so slightly further forward will shallow the angle into the ball, so we'll kind of come into it from a lower lower um, angle of attack into the, into the ball. What that helps with though is it increases the loft on the club face. So if it increases the loft, it'll pop the ball up into the air. And for whatever spin we've lost because of the grass and the lie, we've kind of got back because of the height we're producing. So the landing angle is gonna be more vertical, which means it's not gonna roll as far. I would then grip down on the club a little bit lower and just still make sure that you're using your shoulders and your hips. You're still rotating the body away from the target. And even into that follow through position, you're kind of holding your rotation and holding your finish. I often like to feel like I've just kind of kept the face more open through the impact zone as well. And just as I go into my follow through, rather than having the club face rotating, I try and keep it pointing back at me. So that just know that, that that's where I know as I've come through impact, I've managed to maintain the loft through the ball and I get a little bit more of a higher ball flight. Now I've hit that really soft, but that, you see how high that pops up off the face? So that would have given me a super 
low, super soft landing and not much roll. So to try that again, just let the ball drop. This is a really key one for your practice. Let the ball just drop, not into your old divot. Let the ball drop onto the grass, into the roughs. That kind of, it kind of makes you feel like the ball, that's how the ball would have landed as well, rather than always placing it. Ball position is ever so slightly forward. Grip down, try and hold the angle on the face, but be a bit more aggressive with your turn. More height and much less roll. And then it just releases out to the flag. And that is a much better second attempt. Right, shot number three coming in fast. Right, this next tip purely depends on your skill level as to how you should approach it. I have massively short-sided myself here. I've got to go uphill from rough probably got six to eight feet from the front edge of the green to the flag. But on the beyond it, we've probably got another 30, 40 feet till we run out of green on the other side. So you need to determine whether you're, for your handicap, do you have to get up and down? Are you a scratch golfer, category one golfer, where you think I have to get up and down here? If that is the case, you're gonna need to open the club base a little bit to add loft, which helps you get that kind of stopping angle a bit a bit early, very similar to the previous shot we just played. But you're also going to have to really work the face under the ball. So notice how the club actually goes past my, my hands at this point. So as I'm working through, I'm allowing this trail hand to almost work the club down into the grass and under the ball and almost kind of, I hate this terminology in golf, but scoop it up, okay? We're working a, a higher ball flight. And by trying to get that higher ball flight, we're expecting a lot more height and a lot more stop. That was awesome. Whew. Now, that's the, that's, the, that's the kind of the hard way of playing the shot. It's the high risk element to the shot because you get that wrong, you catch it super fat and the ball won't go anywhere. You could hit it really high and it not make it. Or you could thin it over the other side. You could do a lot wrong with that shot. If you're just thinking, you know what, my game at the moment, if I can just get, when I miss a green, chip on two putt every single time, and that's gonna help you reduce your score, then you're gonna play this shot the same way you played the previous, okay? You're not bothered about getting it close to the flag. You know that this rough is gonna make the ball release. You know that going uphill might make the ball release as well. You know you've short-sighted yourself. So in the back of your mind already, you're thinking, I'm not getting this within 10 foot, but I wanna get it within 30 foot. All right, that way you've got a chance of two putting, you leave with a pogey, and then you know what? You go back to your second shot and you think, why the hell did I short side myself? Because it would have been a lot easier if you'd have played chip number two as your third shot rather than this one. So you're just gonna go back to that kind of ball position further forward and just make sure you've got your body rotating, you pop it up onto the green, stops around about 20, 30 feet, and then obviously the pressure's on to make your two putts relax. There's absolutely no, no gimme, no guarantee that you're gonna two putt from 20, 30 feet. But the real issue if you're in this position is the fact that you've gone for the flag, okay? You've gone for it or you've hit a bad shot or you've hit a bad strike. You've gotta make sure that when you're hitting that approach shot, you never leave yourself in this position. If you do watch a lot of golf on TV, you'll see that there's some shots that golf pros very, very rarely leave themselves. One is short-sided, two is a 50-60 yard bunker shot or 30 to 60 yard bunker shot. Those shots are just the hardest in the world to play. So we try at all costs to never leave ourselves those shots. That's a really important lesson from this part of the tip. Next up, let's go jump in some sand. Right, fourth tip is gonna be from the bunker. Now, this is a tricky bunker shot because I've got the bunker's actually sloping this way, so the ball's gonna be a little bit below my feet. Don't overcomplicate the bunker shot. That's all I can say. To me. The best bit of advice I can give. If you take anything from this tip, it's just don't overcomplicate it. Set up, ball position, just forward of centre, like you would do if it was a hybrid or a five iron or something. Don't bother opening the club face, it's unnecessary. If you've got 56 degrees, 58, whatever it is, there's plenty of loft on there. We're gonna, because the ball's below my feet, it might pop out a little bit to the right-hand side, but all I'm gonna try and do here, because if I go beyond the flag, I'm off the green again, anywhere between the front edge of the green and the flag is a pretty decent shot. What we're gonna do, two things. We're gonna lower the handle ever so slightly. We're gonna go a bit more into posture, so stick your backside out a little bit more, just a bit more tilt. Ball position forward. Always dig your feet in so you know how much sand you've got to work with. Sometimes it's kind of very compact sand. And if it is, 
then you're not going to hit the ball as hard because you're not going to be basically you're not going to be fatting it as much a good bunker shot is but you're basically just fatting it out of the bunker aren't you that's what's helping you get the the initial elevation with the loft so you're just fatting it so all i want to try and do here is just dig in stay stay with a nice strong base weight's going to move across into this left side like maybe 70 30 into your left side and just really work the body still work your rotation and you don't need to do so much with the wrist you can stay pretty rigid nipped it loads of spin on that one or you can use wrists and you can go very similar to the last shot i did which was more the the high risk shot where you're allowing the club to slide underneath the the ball to help get the elevation so there's two risk shots you can do a high risk or low risk first one was low risk i actually nipped it a little bit you could tell i didn't hit it so hard because the, the distance and the ball was fine so this one's a more high risk where i've got a lot more wrist hinge in there and then the ball just pops out and it has a little bit of check spin as it releases and well checks and then has a very initial release so this type of shot should not be over complicated but one of the what those two shots did was plenty of rotation in the body a commitment to keeping my weight on my front side moving into the full follow-through position because that's what i see a lot is golfers just kind of staying planted they kind of go that way and they're like they're almost trying to help it up out of the air okay you're trying to help it up into the air with the body weight on your trail foot to hit the ball up into the air you've got to move and stay on that front foot if you try and fall back you're more likely to catch the sand before the golf ball and as you all know that is a disaster well if it's too far in front of the golf ball obviously right that is four tips down so far we should have saved approximately five shots around right fifth and final shot so this is classes in and around the green i've probably got about 30 yards to the flag so it's not your kind of typical chip shot but we're going into a pitch and again you see yourself in these sort of situations quite often if you've misjudged the the slope or the wind or you've mishit it or you've misclubbed yourself so these shots are pretty common now what do you do you've got plenty of green to work with you've got a fairway so you've not really got a bad lie but you've got to still make sure the technique is correct you've got to make sure you're you're giving yourself the best opportunity to get the best possible strike now one of the one of the key components with a pitch shot of more of this sort of distance is, is allowing the hands to move is allowing the wrists to move so if you see my setup position there if i did the club as an extension of my left arm it would look more like this so the club is already got a, a, a very small hinge at setup okay i'm not going to try and push that forwards because what that's going to do now is going to take the bounce away from the club and i need the bounce because if i do hit it slightly off center uh, slightly for slightly fat or thin it's going to help me also the bounce just kind of glides through the grass really nicely as well so we always want to maintain the bounce now what i'm going to try and do is when i get to this sort of position here i'm going to allow this kind of right the trail arm to fold all right we want to let the golf club just work ever so slightly higher than the hands and as you rotate through you're going to make sure that your your hips are over your lead foot you never want to be flattened down into the trail foot all right so you're going to make sure that your body's rotating the, the club head is higher than your hand so you've got that very slight wrist hinge and the body then is rotating all the way through the shot everything's going to be working more around the lead side and that way you keep the you keep the weight closer to your left side oh what a shot that was such a pure strike the, the landing and then the stop afterwards was it just a delight i'm better on tips than i am in just playing golf that would that fills me with a lot of happiness i'll be honest with you so making sure that you get this get this the technique right allow the trail arm to fold allow the club head to work ever so slightly higher than your hands and make sure you stay around your lead foot let's see if i can do two in a row A little bit higher that time lands it releases out that's probably about six five to six feet it's a nice little shot what you've got to then start doing once you're consistent with the quality of the ball striking you're then trying to work out how the ball reacts when it lands 
often going downhill you kind of get a little bit of a softer landing and less of a roll because the landing angle is a little bit steeper going uphill the ball's landing angle is a little bit shallower so it releases the quality of your golf ball the quality of the ground the receptiveness of the greens the quality of the clubs all play a massive role in how the ball reacts for all of the five shots we've played so far today so i think once you've got consistent with the quality of your ball striking and the quality of your technique then you can start to judge how the ball will most probably react once it hits the green so i hope this video has been invaluable to helping you lower those scores because this is an area of the game forget longer drives forget faster ball speeds faster swings this is the part of the game that will lower your scores guys thanks for watching please do hit the subscribe button see you next time